in exchange for the three Cuban agents. Cuba today released one of the most important intelligence agents that the United States has ever had in Cuba and who has been imprisoned for nearly two decades. This man, whose sacrifice has been known to only a few, provided America with the information that allowed us to arrest the network of Cuban agents that included the men transferred to Cuba today. The convenient front used for the American change of relations with Cuba was the freeing of a government subcontractor who had spent the last five years in a Cuban prison after being uncovered by their government as an American spy. Of course, we never fall for the PR release and seek to find out the facts behind the story. To do so here, let's welcome back former CIA operative and intelligence expert Gary Bernson to bring some reality to the conversation. Gary, good to see you again. Pleasure to be with you today, Ed. Gary, the gentleman's name is Rolando Saraf Trujillo, which apparently is the name that has now leaked and that he was the actual key to all this. Can you, what do we know about who he is, what he did, and why it was so important, his mission, indeed, his original mission? Well, what I would say is this, is that the United States government has been running sources inside of Cuba for a number of years that we've attempted to learn the, the plans and intentions of the Cuban government. And any of our sources, as the man that you gave uh, earlier, you know, that would be the ultimate goal for the United States because Cuba was not only running operations inside the United States that we were trying to learn about, learn running double agents at us, but the Cuban government, the DGI, their intelligence service, and their covert action people, the PCCID, People's uh, Party of Cuba, uh, Communist Party of Cuba International Department, we're running conflicts in Latin America. We're overthrowing governments. So the struggle between the United States and Cuba was something that that was a it was a continuation of what happened in the Cold War. But the Cubans were undermining democracy across Latin America and working against American interests across this hemisphere. This was part of the struggle and all of the sources. And you mentioned the name here a minute ago, and I don't want to provide specifics on any potential case, uh, even though it's been made public. But this is what this struggle has been about. We do want to make the point here that we're not just giving something out here that has been unverified. This is out in the right. Washington Post, and this came from a U.S. official, the name of this gentleman involved. But let's look at the deal itself. This has been called one of the most significant spy swaps in recent memory, and this comes four years after the exchange of these sleeper agents with Russia. Is this indeed significant, and why? Well, it's 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 significant for the United States because we've we've released a number of individuals that were involved in active planning in the United States, and several of them were were resulted their intelligence collection activities resulted in the death of some Americans. You know, uh, but the the reality here is is I have no problem with a trade of intelligence officers for intelligence officers. They arrested Mr. Gross, who was not an intelligence operative. The other gentleman that you mentioned was. Uh, uh, an intelligence operative, uh, uh, clearly a, a source of, of, of the U.S. But the reality is, is we've given the Cubans so much more. We've given them normalization. We've given them a lot and and um, a, a whole lot. And, and it doesn't look like a very good negotiated deal for the U.S. because Cuba has consistently worked against the U.S. and our efforts to build free democratic governments across Latin America that were free market based. That's the bigger story as I see it. Remember, they put in their own guy uh, in Bolivia, Evo Morales. They put in Mujica down in Uruguay, the president down there, who was a Tupamaro. He's a member of a terrorist organization. They've supported the FARC, uh, the, the, the leftist narco traffickers in Colombia. Anytime anyone was injured, they, they take them across the border into Venezuela and fly them to hospitals in Cuba. I mean, the Cubans have supported terrorism, left wing criminal activity. They, they, they realized that, and, and here's what happened. When, when the Cubans went into Central America years ago in the 1980s and 1990s, the United States went with the CIA and special forces and beat them back. So what the Cubans did was they changed their tactics, they switched over to the political process, and they overcame the political process by seizing control of left-wing political parties in, in Latin America with murder, mayhem, money, the whole thing, you know, press articles, they seized the left and they defeated the U.S. and the left in a number of those countries, not with terrorism, but by illegally and in many ways consuming the political and assuming the political process. I've only got about 15 seconds left. Quick answer. We'll talk more after the break. So do you then think that our intelligence efforts will get better now if we open up a embassy and we're actually on the ground in some sort of a quote unquote official capacity? No, they won't get any better because this is a uh, an absolute police state. 
I expect no changes from the Cubans. They stated, yes, we'll let the internet in, we'll do this or that. They're not going to do any of it. This is an authoritarian government. The only way they can stay in power is with complete uh, a, a complete control, and it's a police state. Okay, hold on to that. Gary Bernson, stay with us after a short break. We dive into the little man in North Korea and how he and his cohorts brought America to its knees because of a movie.